A conservation corridor is really a spatial and a social ecological strategy to combine biodiversity conservation and sustainable land use in such a way that really extensive areas can be incorporated into a corridor and, and places can be connected so that there are avenues and routes and opportunities for animals to migrate and to disperse and for plants and seeds to be able to similarly disperse and, and so that really it's a way of, of connecting fragments or patches of smaller conservation areas into a much larger whole. Which so the idea of a corridor is a really complex one, right? It's a, it's a, it's a spatial strategy on one hand. I've tried to talk about you know what are really massive um, areas. The the one of the they're they're about six, absolutely huge, and and most vital conservation corridors in the world. And one of those is in the Central Andes. It connects Central Peru and Central Bolivia. It's called the Vilcanota Amboro. Corridor. It runs from the areas north of, of Cusco, both in the Andes and in the Amazon, across the Lake Titicaca Basin, down into the Manu and the Madidi, immense biosphere reserves, and into central Bolivia. So this is about 800 miles that arguably is the most biologically diverse place in the world, but not just for various forms of mammals, plants and animals and amphibians, etc., but also for domesticated plants. So here we have 6,000 types of potatoes are being grown. This is where the, the biodiversity of agricultural plants is among its most concentrated um, nuclei in the entire world. One environmental I I issue that, that I've become very aware of as I started working in s southeastern Peru was road building in, in, in the Amazon. Uh, this, this is something that's been going on for a lo long time, especially in, what, what, in eastern Brazil. Ecological impacts of, of the road are, are very real, and this is something that from the, 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 the planning, the con con conservation planning efforts in, in the region, um, we, we, we've been involved with in certain in different le le levels and trying to understand the connectivity of habitats in the region, looking at, at sort of corridor ideas to hopefully maintain connections across the road. Because, and it's a common thing in the rainforest in the eastern Amazon, they saw the first impact of any new road was very rapid changes along the road because now the forests along the road were easier to cut down. The, 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 the timber that was there was a lot easier to, to a, a, a access, to turn in, into its, its board pro pro products and tr truck it out of there. Um, the s scientists have been wor working in Puerto Maldonado for uh, easily for t t 10 years, have been anticipating the impact of the road and trying to work with the companies to mit, mit mitigate the the impacts of the road itself so uh, a lot a, 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 as you pr pr proceed uh, up the hot highway d d different communities were identified based on the amount of h hunting that they already did the animals that they saw and trying to identify okay by using this lo 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 local knowledge to identify so some of the best places to preserve the forest or restore the forest to help maintain connections. The ro 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 road company itself um, did, did, did buy into a lot of the ideas and, and uh, where it was appropriate uh, tried to construct, uh, construct uh, 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 underpasses in the road that w would allow for some of this connectivity. Uh, the l l larger animals, they're, they're still uncertain whether they, that they would tr typically use the, this kind of uh, underpass because they weren't very wide. When you talk about conflicts in the region, probably a good place to start actually is some of the primary stressors. So the two 
we have the most experience with really are uh, timber production and gold mining. And we've worked quite a bit on gold mining. So if you really look um, on particularly alluvial gold mining, which is small scale gold mining done um, on a lot of these headwaters of the Amazon in a lot of these basins. So it really creates a couple of different conflicts. Uh, one is quite simply the conflict with conservation planning because a lot of that alluvial gold mining is done, so to speak, illegally in the conservation corridors or actually on park land um, adjacent to parks. And so that's a conflict. Um, it also creates a lot of social tension because really what it asked people to do was there's been a tremendous uh, migration of people from the Andes down into the rainforest. So what happens as a consequence of that? Um, that means that people arrive in the rainforest in fairly large numbers um, and they've grown up in an environment which is completely different, right? They've grown up in a high altitude, um, not a lot of vegetation, and all of a sudden they're in the rainforest where um, things are look incredibly closed in and dense. And so they bring land use practices with them that are totally inappropriate to the environment. So um, they don't, they live very close to the river. They don't move far um, inland. They have a tendency to clear because they don't like that, that closed in feeling. It's all important in terms of environmental quality, livelihoods, lifestyle, food, um, health uh, for the communities and people who live in and near the protected areas. We can't expect them, it would be extraordinarily unjust as well as just um, blatantly unfeasible to suggest that people and communities in and near protected areas would sort of give up and sacrifice given, you know, under any conditions, but maybe especially given how poor many of these people already are, you know, they can't be expected to make sacrifices in order to um, better the situation of the protected area. So what goes on?